Hey everyone. Yes, I know I said that our second video today was going to actually be a piece about Microsoft's plans for Nintendo. There seems to be some stuff going on out there, but uh, I'm pushing that video back uh, again uh, just because there's a lot of stuff going on. Actually, I even have some more Zelda rumors to potentially talk about, but this is getting out of rumor bill and this takes priority. Remember folks, real news always takes like official you know, undebatable news always takes precedent over any sort of rumor. And today, oh boy, it doesn't get more official than this. This guy behind me, Shintaro Furukawa, he is the president. He is the captain. He is the leader of Nintendo of Japan, a.k.a. he runs everything, opened his mouth. Uh, he had an interview with Japanese uh, newspaper Nikkei. Uh, and, oh boy, did he say a lot of really, really cool things. Uh, things that could pertain to Switch Pro. Uh, things that deal with the future of Nintendo's game development. Uh, just, wow. Uh, and we have a translation of this courtesy of Video Game Chronicle. So again, they're the ones that translated this. I also took a look at the original article and Google translated it just to make sure there wasn't any um, sort of massive inconsistencies with what Google Translate says versus them, just in case, you know, some things get lost in translation sometimes. But we got some good stuff here. So uh, Nintendo's president actually provided an update on Switch hardware production, stating that the company has been able to secure enough semiconductors for immediate production. So right now, don't worry about it. Nintendo's going to be able to make enough Switches to meet demand. That's good news. I mean, other companies are struggling. Nintendo said, hey, we're fine for now. Now, before I get into the rest of what Shintura Furukawa had to say, if you're enjoying this content, hit that like button on the video. Hey, if we get to 2,000 likes, I'll give away a $20 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card to somebody down in the comments right now. Um, well, within the first 24 hours. Also, uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, we've got a giveaway going on. Head down to the pinned comment to find out how to enter that. All right. So, uh he went on to tell uh, that the Switch would still experience harbor shortages this year due to significant demand, potentially. He says, We've been able to secure the necessary materials for immediate production of semiconductors for Switches, says Shintaro Furukawa. However, in Japan and other countries, demand has been very strong since the beginning of the year. And there is a possibility of shortages at some retailers in the future. So what he's basically saying is, look, we've been able to meet demand so far, but there's possibility we might not at some retailers in some countries in the future basically orders might eventually outpace their production which doesn't mean that they're unable to um you know th that they're just struggling due to semiconductors it just means hey this is how many units we can make and orders might exceed what we're able to make that just is what it is it's a good problem to have for nintendo not necessarily a good problem if you're a consumer uh, it's a, he says, it is difficult to say how we will deal with this, but in some cases, we may not be able to prepare enough for orders. So he's just straight up saying, you know what, there, there could be an, a, an opportunity second half of this year. I'm guessing he's, he's talking around holidays where they're just not going to be able to make enough switches. He just already knows it. it he foresees it coming. Um, they have their, their orders in for semiconductors. They're getting the parts they need. They're not having any issues at the moment, but it's one of those things that when orders go above what they're getting currently, he's not so sure Nintendo can keep up. This is a problem for the entire tech industry, so this isn't really exclusive. This is just Nintendo being open and honest that, hey, look, we're, we're, we are probably going to see issues with this in the future. Um, so obviously we know about the global shortage of semiconductors, which is actually just the semiconductor makers are just unable to make more semiconductors than they currently have because demand is way higher than it's ever been for computer components. So, like, the industry just was not prepared for the surge in demand. It will be fixed by 2023, a little too late, but it is what it is. Now, Shatura Furukawa went on to say a bunch of other things. Um, so, let's just get into what he said. He says, with the expansion of time spent at home, the range of entertainment as an object of consumption is expanding, says Shatura Furukawa. Games are not a necessity of life. In order for customers to choose games in their finite time, they have to be interesting. Competition is tough, and I am not optimistic. So Shijiro Furukawa is doing something you rarely hear Nintendo presidents do. One, he talks about competition for people's time, 
competition in the game market and that he's not optimistic for Nintendo. Remember, this is the company that has the leading platform in the video game industry right now. The most popular, highest selling platform today with the game selling the most copies right now is factually Nintendo Switch. And he's not confident. He's not optimistic about the future, about being able to maintain that position. As he said in the past, every year is do or die for Shintaro Furukawa. He doesn't view it any other way, so he doesn't actually think that Nintendo is in as strong of a position as people think they are. It's a very interesting perspective from a Nintendo that usually is celebrating their successes. He's like, uh, this isn't good enough. We actually have to worry about our competition. We have to worry about PlayStation 5. We have to worry about Xbox Series X. We have to worry about Netflix and all these other things. Nintendo has never worried about that stuff, at least since Iwata took over. This is a massive change in ideology, uh, and I'm very surprised to see him talk so openly about the fact that he's just not optimistic. There, there, there's more work that needs to be done. Nintendo needs to hit that grindstone. So here's what he goes on to say. I myself, yes, he's saying himself, am looking in and studying various forms of entertainment. So he's looking into the competition, right? Like, he's not ignoring their existence. Uh, and he says, in the future, we will focus on creating new game series as well as long sellers such as Mario and Zelda. What he is saying there is, hey, we're not just going to rest on all these ports and remasters like we've been doing lately. We're not just going to rest on Mario, Zelda, and Animal Crossing, Pokemon like as being these pillars that are going to sell things. Oh, we'll keep making those games. We're not idiots. We know the demand is high, but we know we need to evolve. We need to have more games, more new IP. Splatoon and ARMS, those things can't just be like a once-a-generation new IP thing. We need to kick it even higher gear. Now, look, they have other games out there that they've tried, you know, um, Damon X Machina that they funded, uh, uh, Astral Chain that they funded as well. They own both those IPs, but Nintendo's like, hey, we got to go even harder and harder and harder. And I think, you know, when you start to hear the rumors about Retro Studios potentially working on a new, a new IP, you start to hear rumors about Monolith Soft working on new IPs. I think he's fully committed to this idea that Nintendo can't just keep making the things they've always been making. We got to be pushing new games and new IP. Uh, and I, this is exciting. This is really, really exciting. This is one of the most exciting things. This is one of the most exciting interviews a Nintendo president has given in so long. So Shintura Furukawa is not mincing words here. He realizes the competition is fierce. He's not optimistic about Nintendo's position and he wants to keep pushing. Now, granted, I don't think we're going to see the fruits of this these efforts for three, four years, so probably not until their next-gen platform, but still, this is, wow. This is a president that is very business-focused and realizes, hey, it ain't just about having fun and resting on our laurels. It's about, hey, this is a business, and we want to be on top always. And we got to do what it's going to take. And we think it's going to take new IP. We think it's going to take pay attention to the hardware market, actually paying attention to what our competition is doing, and answering what our competition is doing. Very interesting. So, uh, he did talk about new hardware, by the way, uh, of course, because every interview he gives is going to be asked about new hardware because people want him to kind of slip up and spill the beans on Switch Pro. Uh, now, remember, last year he definitively said there will not be a new model Switch releasing in 2020. Since then, in every interview he's done in 2021, which has been about three of them, he has not denied that there is going to be a Switch this year. He's actually skirted around the question in a very Reggie fils Satura Awada kind of way. And again, he skirted around the question again. He says, so we are constantly building up ideas for the new consoles the market is expecting, but there are some things we can't do now due to technology and cost constraints. The hardware and software development teams are in the same building, communicating closely and thinking about how we can propose new forms of entertainment. In order to create a single piece of hardware, we have to do a lot of preparation several years in advance. So we are working without stopping. In the end, the deciding factor if whether or not to commercialize a product is whether it can create a new experience. Now, a lot of that is obviously a bunch of fluff talk for a new generation. He's not, they're not going to launch a next generation system until they feel like they have have something that's worthy of being that next platform okay that's fine but what does that mean about new hardware now the question that he was given specifically the interview was asking him about releasing a new hardware this year he didn't even bother to, to answer that question he just 
conveniently converted it into a general statement about Nintendo's hardware practices. Um, Shintaro Furukawa was asked this exact same question by this exact same outlet last year. And he said, we are not releasing new hardware in 2020. Notice he's not saying we are not releasing new hardware in 2021. He's like, hey, when things are ready is when we will release them, is basically his general statement. <laughs> Read between the tea leaves, folks. Read between the tea leaves. From definitive no to, hey, we're going to fluff talk about general hardware practices at Nintendo. Come on now. Come on now. And, and, and we know from other industry insiders, actual journalists that have spoken with developers that dev units are in the wild for this new platform. So it's kind of like Nintendo couldn't even deny it if they wanted to, but uh, I mean, they could, they have straight up denied things like, Hey, you're not going to get a new 3ds, new 3ds announced like three weeks later. And anyways, you kind of get the drift. I guess Nintendo's avoiding lying by just say, not saying anything at all and just kind of BS talking around it, which is, is what it is. So, very interesting interview. Nintendo uh, is in a very different place with Shintaro Furukawa. And I'm actually starting to gain a lot of respect for Shintaro Furukawa. I think there has been a lot of worry among Nintendo fans that this kind of president is not what Nintendo needs. You had Owada before he passed away who was a gamer, a game developer, uh, fundamentally understood gamers on a different level than most corporate CEOs. Uh, and was just beloved by the gaming industry and endeared to us with all those Nintendo directs that he put himself in, you know, as the face of. Um, Reggie fils in the same way. So what the tea leaves turned over, you know, once he passed away to Tatsumi Kimishima and then now to Shintura Furukawa, who is very business oriented uh, and very not front facing. Shintura Furukawa doesn't put himself out there. He's not into the Nintendo directs. He doesn't do a ton of interviews. Um, it made people be like, man, I don't know if I like this new Nintendo. Then you see all the ports and remasters. You see the criticism over Super Mario 3D All-Stars, despite the fact that it probably sold 10 million units. So Nintendo's laughing their way to the bank on that decision uh, all across the board from not adding new content to making it limited time. Nintendo clearly feels like they made the right choice. Uh, Shintura Furukawa is very business oriented, but there's also a positive to that. And that is we have a president that now gives a shit about what's happening in the rest of the industry. He cares that PlayStation 5 is selling the Game Busters. He cares that Xbox is selling the Game Busters. He's starting to notice probably things like Game Pass. He's starting to notice that these companies are doing these things that Nintendo is behind on. And what could Nintendo potentially do with a similar idea in a Nintendo-like way? What could Nintendo do to reinvigorate the market? Nintendo's at the top now, but they could literally be at the bottom next year. That's how quickly things can turn around. One year from now, people might not want to buy Switch anymore. And he knows that. And he knows we can't just make Splatoon 3 and call it good. We can't just make Breath of the Wild 2 and call it good. We can't rest on our laurels. We need to keep making new and exciting things. New IP. This attitude has not existed at Nintendo since the 80s and 90s. And who ran Nintendo back then? The founding family of Nintendo that was the most business-oriented people ever. Didn't give two craps about gaming. But they cared about good business. The Nintendo you remember growing up, if you're my age in your mid-30s, is a Nintendo that was ran by people who weren't gamers. It was ran by business people. Business people have a different understanding of the industry because they don't look at it through the prism of, hey, let's put smiles on people's faces. They look through the prism of, how can we keep momentum and keep building more and more and more and more? And ultimately, the positive side of that, the downside is potential microtransactions, all that jazz, profiteering, all that. But the positive side is the amount of video games that are going to be made and the amount of experimenting that's going to be happening and Nintendo constantly looking for that next Splatoon, that next ARMS. You know, they're going to keep trying to find the next Mario, the next Zelda game. And hopefully they decide, hey, you know what we're really short on at Nintendo? Western-made games. So if they're letting Retro Studios make their own IP, that's a start. You know, they just bought that studio out of Canada. Are they going to let them make their own IP? That would be a start. Nintendo is acutely aware of the industry in a way that they haven't been in a long time. And this is not an insult to Shatura Awada. Uh, uh, like, Awada was amazing, man. Like, Satoru Iwata, there is no doubt about the character of that person, the you know the way he connected with gamers, the way he cut his own salary instead of firing people. Look, he is one of the most honorable corporate CEOs we probably ever, have ever had in video game history. So there is nothing bad I want to say about someone who's, who's now dead and passed away. But 
This is a different Nintendo. People have been begging for this kind of Nintendo to come back. We'll have to see if Shintaro Furukawa can stay true to his words. All right, folks. I'm Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in again. It's so exciting when we get real stuff like this. It's so rare. But maybe with Shintaro Furukawa, talk like this won't be so rare. He just shoots it from the hip. And he's like, yeah, we ain't, we ain't resting. We're going for the jugular. All right, folks. I'll catch you in the next video.